Ray Sloan was born on the core world of Ganthel, an industrial world that served largely as a way station to richer and more beautiful planets. Her family was not wealthy, and Sloan grew up with the hopes of one day escaping the planet and travelling the galaxy. The Empire came to the world and cracked down on the crime that ran rampant there, causing Sloan to regard it as a necessary force to control the chaotic galaxy. This became her motivation for joining the Empire. Sloan graduated high in her class at the Prefsbelt Imperial Academy, and as a lieutenant, found herself being instructed at the Defiance Flight Training Institute, a holdover from the days of the Republic under Commander Pell Bailo. Bailo taught many of the Empire's naval officers, though he was known for resisting the Empire's commands. Around five years after the establishment of the Empire, Sloan was on board the Defiance when it carried Emperor Palpatine from Coruscant towards Ryloth. She noticed an error in the ship's route, which she reported to the Emperor's companion, Darth Vader. It was discovered that Bailo intended to destroy the ship and assassinate the Emperor in the process. With this information given to him by Sloane, Vader was able to prevent Bailo's plan and execute him. Following her education, Sloane later became the executive officer on Grand Moff Tarkin's flagship. For some time, she worked with Tarkin in bringing the Outer Rim worlds under control. She was eventually promoted to captain and Tarkin assigned her temporary command of the Star Destroyer, the Ultimatum, where she was tasked with escorting Count Denetrius Vidian on his assignments to improve efficiency on Imperial worlds. Vidian and Sloan visited the planet Gorse, where Vidian was meant to increase production of Thorolide for the use in the Empire's war machines. During the assignment, Sloan came to realise that Vidian was working against the interests of the Empire to discredit his own rival, Baron Lero Danth, and improve his own standing. This mission also introduced her to Kanan Jarrus, who was at the time hiding out on Gorse. Claiming to be an agent of the Empire, Kanan gave Sloan information proving Vidian's treason, which she then confirmed for herself. Once she knew his true intentions, Sloan worked to thwart Vidian's plans, her goals inadvertently and temporarily aligning with those of Kanan and his rebel friends. Her success secured her promotion to permanent captain of the Ultimatum, although she quickly realised Kanan had not been an Imperial agent at all. Discovering the true identity of the false agent became an obsession of Sloane's over the following years, as she climbed through the ranks to Vice Admiral. She eventually caught up with him on LAN, where she held him at gunpoint, but Kanan managed to knock her out using the Force. Once she recovered, the Grand Inquisitor arrived to question her, and learn everything she had discovered about the Jedi survivor. Her failure to apprehend him saw her demoted and relegated to mundane assignments for a time. For instance, following the destruction of Alderaan, Sloan worked to hunt down refugees from the planet. Years later, the Ultimatum was assigned to Death Squadron, the group of Star Destroyers led by Darth Vader in the hunt for the Rebel base. Sloan was not present when the base on Hoth was discovered and destroyed, due to a week-long trip to the shipyards on Fondor. This absence likely saved her life because the Ultimatum and its temporary captain were destroyed during the chase of the Millennium Falcon through an asteroid field. Upon returning to Death Squadron, Sloan deduced the Falcon's hiding place inside a space lug. Although it was too late to capture the Falcon itself, this impressed Darth Vader and embarrassed Admiral Piet, who had initially dismissed Sloan's proposal. As a reward for her analysis, Vader assigned Sloan command of the Star Destroyer, initially intended to be commanded by Piet's nephew, the Vigilance. Not long after, it was from the command deck of the Vigilance that Admiral Sloan participated in the Battle of Endor. After the Rebels managed to destroy the Death Star shield generator, she began to sense how the tide of the battle was turning. Once the station blew up, it was Sloan who ordered the Imperial fleet to retreat to the nearby Anarch system. While the rebellion reorganised into the New Republic, Sloan joined forces with one of the highest ranking Imperial commanders left, Fleet Admiral Gallius Rax. Under Rax's orders, Sloan organised a meeting of other remaining influential Imperials on the planet Akiva in the months following the Battle of Endor. As the guests began to arrive, Sloan captured the rebel pilot Wedge Antilles, who had been on a scouting mission in the system and had accidentally stumbled across the meeting. 
Once the meeting began, Sloan clashed with the Imperial leaders on the best direction for the Empire to take, but a team of rebels led by Nora Wexley banded together to disrupt the meeting and rescue Antilles. Sloan was the only key Imperial to escape Akiva, and she returned to reunite with Rax. It was then that Rax revealed to her that he had planned for the New Republic to learn of the meeting and use them to wipe out the conflicted and incompetent leaders, leaving them the de facto heads of the Imperial Remnant. It was around this time that Sloan also became aware of the New Republic Starhawk project, which was recycling scrapped and captured Imperial Star Destroyers into a warship capable of turning the tide of the conflict with its powerful tractor beam. Sloan assigned Captain Teresa Carroll and Titan Squadron to find the project and its head, Lyndon Javes. When the Starhawk was located at Nadiri, Sloan orchestrated attacks on New Republic worlds, including Gorse, Moncala, and Onduan, to divert Nadiri's defenses. Although the Starhawk's engineers managed to escape, the Imperial attack at Nadiri was successful in destroying the Starhawk prototype and setting the project back significantly. With her competency having been proven, Rax promoted Sloan to Grand Admiral, making her the commander of the entire remaining Imperial fleet and a puppet for him to control from the shadows. Sloan continued the process of eliminating other rogue surviving Imperial leaders, solidifying the control her faction had over the Remnant. Other Imperials, like Commander Brendel Hux, were instead recruited into a new Shadow Council formed by Rax to aid in governance. Despite her alliance with Rax, Sloan became increasingly suspicious of him due to his shrouded history and ascension. The two began to disagree more often about the right path forward in the fight against the New Republic. Determined to learn more about Rax's history, Sloan snuck away in secret to the Imperial capital of Coruscant, which remained locked down and nominally overseen by Grand Vizier Masamita, who is little more than a figurehead. In scouring Imperial records in the capital, Sloan discovered a possible connection between a young Rax and a number of powerful Imperials, including the Emperor himself. She confronted Masamita and learned Rax had unexpectedly come into the Empire in a shuttle from Jakku. Aware of her investigations, Rax asked for her trust and revealed he intended to launch an attack on the New Republic capital of Chandrilla. Though he remained vague when asked about his past, Rax promised to support Sloan as a candidate for Emperor. Sloan accepted Rax's plan and arranged peace talks with Mon Mothma to be held on Chandrilla with the intent of lowering the New Republic's guard. As Sloan met with Mon Mothma on Chandrilla, many liberated New Republic prisoners began attacking their own people. Rax had secretly implanted inhibitor chips into the prisoners, much like the ones used by Palpatine during the Clone Wars. Chaos broke loose at the peace talks and Sloan was disgusted by a tactic she saw as something the rebels would do. When Sloan announced her intentions to leave and execute Rax, Sloan's own aide attempted to assassinate her on Rax's behalf. She managed to escape but lost her influence as a leader of the Empire. Rax took advantage of her disappearance to announce her death and promote himself as the new leader of the fleet. Sloan swore revenge on Rax and allied with Brenton Wexley, one of the prisoners that Rax had used against the New Republic, and Nora's husband, on a crusade to hunt down and kill the new head of the Empire. Wexley and Sloan made their way to Jakku, Rax's homeworld and the planet where Rax had begun marshalling the Imperial fleet for a final battle with the New Republic. The duo met Nimma the Hutt, the future namesake of Nimma Outpost, and manipulated her to help them get to Rax's mysterious base. Rax managed to capture them in their attempt and began to let them in on his plans. He showed off his new child soldiers, brutally trained by Commander Hux, and allowed them to watch as he gave a speech to the gathered Imperial army. As the New Republic arrived and the battle began, Sloan and Wexley were able to escape. In order to stop Rax, Sloan reluctantly allied with her old enemy Nora. The trio realized the Battle of Jakku was the final stage of the Emperor's contingency designed to lure the Empire and New Republic to one place before destroying both and the planet itself using one of Palpatine's observatories. The three confronted Rax, who proved to be a formidable adversary. He overpowered Sloan and killed Brenton before Sloan managed to shoot him several times. As Rax lay dying, he informed Sloan of the rest of Palpatine's secret plan so that she could fulfill it 
and guide the Empire to its future. Rax instructed Sloane to take one of Palpatine's ships into the Unknown Regions and find the Emperor's hidden Super Star Destroyer, the Eclipse. While on the ship, bound for the Unknown, Sloane formed a tentative accord with Commander Hux's young son, Armitage, who eventually grew into one of the First Order's most prominent leaders. The journey took months, but eventually the ship found its destination. Although the circumstances that led the Eclipse into the Unknown remains unclear, Sloan vowed to use the ship and the resources she had at her disposal to build a new empire. Control over the faction was eventually wrestled away by a figure known as Snoke, who was secretly a puppet for the still-living Emperor. Although she was no longer present within the First Order, by the time of Starkiller Base, Sloan's exact fate remains a mystery. Wherever she ended up, whether she was dead or alive, her name still held enough weight that it could intimidate some of the most powerful officers in the resurgent empire, and her legacy remained eternal. <laughs>